Hey everybody, welcome to my Blu-ray collection video. I'll try to make this video as quick as I can, but I'm going to basically show you all the Blu-rays I have. I'll give you a brief summary on what I think. I'm going to include a concert movie in here, just so you know. And also, I took a couple of ideas from the FlickPit channel and Chris Stuckman. I have them all listed in alphabetical order, and I'm going to bunch some of these into one group because I think it's a little bit easier. Plus, I also got them in a big pile right here. So, yeah. I'd also like to give a shout out to Robin176. I think, I think that's her YouTube name. Yeah, okay. And also to Shane Palmer, who inspired me to do this video. So, thank you both. And I'll put the link to their channel in the description below. So, let's start, shall we? Let's start off by the numbers. 310 to Yuma, Christian Bale, Russell Crowe, one of my favorite westerns, Argo. Best picture winner, and you know what? After Gone Baby Gone in the town, seeing this, Mr. Affleck, you know how to make a movie. The Adjustment Bureau. Now, not too many people remember this movie. I think it came out in 2011 with Matt Damon and Emily Blunt. Man, is she hot. <laughs> it has a really interesting message, too, about choosing your own path, even if some other people not, might not think it, that it's the right one really awesome movie the avengers i mean come on it's the avengers seeing this in the theater last year i was i was in awe i really was especially with the last act when the fight sequence is going down in new york city that was just awesome but it wasn't just the action i was actually surprised how whedon was able to balance all these characters out and without them taking over everything kind of like the, what spider-man 3 did with the multiple villains and everything oh yeah and the hulk mark ruffalo is the hulk best Hulk that's ever been. That's my secret. I'm always angry. What? <sighs> point 21 gigawatts! Come on, how could you not like Back to the Future? How could you not like it? Come on, it's a classic. The first one is the best one. I like the other two. The second's my least favorite. The third one, it's my favorite Back to the Future sequel, which actually surprised me because I've ran into a lot of people who don't really like Back to the Future 3. And I don't really understand why. I mean, I do like Back to the Future too. don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's like a masterpiece or anything. One of the best trilogies that's ever been made. Michael J. Fox is just so awesome as Marty McFly and Christopher Lloyd. He's a lot of fun here. And ever since I saw this as a kid, I wanted that DeLorean so bad. I want to travel in time. The Dark Knight trilogy. Batman Begins, the Batman movie that fans were waiting for and that me myself was waiting for. And Christian Bale as Batman, just perfect. Nobody's ever going to beat him, in my opinion. Though, I will give Ben Affleck a chance. The Dark Knight. People say that this is the best superhero movie that's ever been made, and you know what? I can't argue with that. I, I, I really can't. I mean, some people say it's overrated. If you think it's overrated, fine. I mean, I don't care. Heath Ledger's The Joker. Wow. And The Dark Knight Rises? I loved it, okay? This was my favorite movie of last year. So many people are saying, Oh, there's plot holes. Oh my god, how did he get back into Gotham? Guess what? I don't care. I don't care how he got back. He's Bruce Wayne, he knows his way around, he's got connections. Now we have the Bourne Trilogy. I've only seen the first one. I saw it this past Christmas before I left for basic training, and I still have yet to see the other two. From what I remember, this movie's actually pretty awesome, and Matt Damon. Matt Damon's one of my favorite actors, and, and he is really good at, at the action scenes. Don't worry, I will watch the other two. The Blind Side. This movie was just so amazing. Based on a true story of how this woman from Tennessee Help this poor kid, no place to go, and how he became one of the most famous NFL players that ever lived. I love it. The Breakfast Club. Grow up, your heart dies. Who cares? I care. You know, this is one of the best 80s movies, and that scene, yeah, where they're talking, and they're just wondering, are we gonna be like our parents? I felt that way sometimes too, but, but you know what, this is a really good look at high school life. Casablanca. I'll be honest with you, I've not watched this movie ever before. I actually bought this from my mother a few weeks ago, but I do know the famous line, "Here's looking at you. It's an iconic line, so don't worry, I will watch this one day. The Cider House Rules. Michael Caine, Tobey Maguire, and Charlize Theron. This is the movie that caused Sam Raimi to cast Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. And you know, a lot of people hate Tobey Maguire. They think he's a terrible actor. I'm not one of those people. He's definitely one of my favorites. I think he does a great job in Cider House Rules. And Michael Caine, he's one of the greatest actors that's ever lived. And I think he I think he even won an Oscar for this. Yeah, he did. And really great coming-of-age story. Check it out if you haven't seen it. I like the way you die, boy. Calm yourselves, gentlemen. I marry a weirdly traveler. <laughs> Django Unchained. One of my favorite films of 2012. And you know what? This is probably my favorite Quentin Tarantino film. 
Not a popular opinion, unfortunately. What about Pulp Fiction? I'll be honest, and I'll say it later, I have not seen Pulp Fiction yet. And I know a lot of Tarantino fans are going to kill me, but out of all the Tarantino movies I've seen, which I think is Inglourious Bastards and Reservoir Dogs, I don't remember what Reservoir Dogs too much, this is probably my favorite Tarantino film. Jamie Foxx is really good. Christoph Waltz, he steals the show. Leonardo DiCaprio? Holy crap. Up until this movie, I'd never seen him do a role like that. I mean, for him to be a slave owner, be so maniacal, but yet be so likable at the same time? I mean, because it's Leonardo DiCaprio. Wow. This, I, I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, this is a classic. E.T. One of Spielberg's best. And that scene at the end, and where he just goes, I'll be right here. And, oh, God. Just, I love that. And... If you haven't seen this yet, what the hell are you doing? What are you doing with yourself? Watch it. Next we have Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. Now, now hear me out. Just hear me out, okay? I didn't mind this movie too much. I, I really didn't. And the fact that it was nominated for Best Picture, I don't think it really deserved that because it was good, but it wasn't like a masterpiece. But I, I didn't mind this movie. To be honest with you, the, I mean, the kid, he didn't bother me. You know, a lot of kids in movies don't aren't really good at acting. Unless you put them with the right director, but... Yeah, I, I, I didn't mind this movie too much. The Fighter. I'm the pride of fucking low, I knocked down Sugar Ray Leonard. I'm the pride of, I'm the pride of low, I knocked down Sugar Ray Leonard, I had it all. <laughs> Oscar-worthy performance by Christian Bale. He stole the show. Okay, it's, it's pretty obvious. Though, Mark Wahlberg should not be overlooked. I don't know how too many people feel about Mark Wahlberg, but he's definitely one of my favorite actors. I love Mark Wahlberg and Christian Bale, but I have to say, Christian Bale, he stole the show. And Amy Adams, you don't want to forget Amy Adams. Rip that hair right out of your head. I love that line. Gangs of New York, one of Martin Scorsese's best, and really, really Daniel Day-Lewis, really creepy and really intriguing at the same time with his performance. Cameron Diaz is, eh, I don't, I don't mind Cameron Diaz. I mean, she doesn't bother me too much here. And Leonardo DiCaprio, come on. And I also love the look of New York City. And this takes place, the five points in New York City, my grandmother's from there. She knows that area. And I love how Martin Scorsese is very, very into New York. Like he just loves that city. And every one of his movies that takes place in New York City you could, sh you could see his love for New York in there. And especially, I'm really looking forward to his next film, Wolf on Wall Street. But I also love the song, The Hands That Built America by U2. Really beautiful song. Really good movie overall. The Great Gatsby. I know what you're going to say. I, I know a lot of people have mixed feelings about this one. Some people liked it, some people didn't. Some people thought it was too flashy and everything. But I like it, though. I mean... I read the book in high school. I wasn't really into the book, and but I actually appreciate it even more. Leonardo DiCaprio is just brilliant as Gatsby. Carrie Mulligan as Daisy, she, she was okay. I mean, I think it was more her character that I was bothered with. Joel Edgerton, he was just like maniacal, but he was so good at it. And Tobey Maguire as Nick Carraway. Some people don't like him as Nick Carraway. Some people were just like up in arms for that. I thought he was great. And he's really good at portraying the sense of innocence where he just looks around and he's like, oh, look at that, look at that. Really good cast. And even though it could have been a little bit better, it could have been a little bit more engaging, I still think it's a good adaptation of The Great Gatsby. G.I. Jane. Yeah. I, I watched this for Demi Moore. And how could you not love that line? Suck my <laughs> I think it's a lot of fun. And Demi Moore, she's so, she's so awesome in this. And Vio Mortensen, but yeah. Love G.I. Jane. Goodfellas. I've only seen parts of this, so I'm not too familiar with how it goes. I mean, I've seen the scene where Joe Pesci just basically goes, beats that guy to death on the floor, and also the scene where um, Ray Liotta's character, Henry Hill, goes on about his childhood and how he becomes a member of the Mafia, so I've only seen parts of it, but from what I've seen, it looks really good. Don't worry, I will watch it. How do you like them apples? Matt Damon almost consistently has never disappointed. Robin Williams actually surprised me here. I'm used to him being like the whole ah, ah, like that, that the funny quirky guy. Not here though. And that scene where he says, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Oh God, such a, such a great movie. And Ben Affleck, Ben Affleck, I think he won an Oscar for best screenplay. Well-deserved. And another set I'm gonna bunch into one, The Hangover 1 and 2. 
Yeah, I, I, I know, I know. Not, not too many people like the second one. I saw the third one earlier when I was at AIT on my weekend pass. I didn't like it. Yeah, first one's the best one. Can't deny it. Second one, it's the same thing. But you know what? Every time I watch this, I do feel like watching this. There are some good moments to this. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, I mean, I don't really think we needed two sequels. But love The Hangover. Harry Potter Deathly Hallows Part 1 and 2. I have the rest of the films on DVD. I will upgrade them to Blu-ray soon. And I like pretty much all of them. But these two are definitely the standouts for me. I mean, I actually remember seeing this, and toward, seeing this in the theater, the second part, towards the end. Because I'm like, oh, it's over. Yeah, I was upset, but you know what? It's Harry Potter. How can you go wrong? Home Alone 1 and 2, I love the first one. The second one I do like because of the whole New York City vibe that you get from it. I will never, ever own Home Alone 3. I did not like it at all. Inception. Out of all the Christopher Nolan films I've seen, I've seen the Dark Knight trilogy, which are, which are great movies in their own right. They are great. And this one. This, I would say, is his best film ever. I didn't go see this in the theater. But watching this at home for the first time, it actually took me a few viewings to f figure out what the hell was going on. Because we jumping from dream to dream to dream, within a dream, within a dream. It, it, it's just like so confusing. And, and I just went, what the hell is going on? Great cast and great score by Hans Zimmer. Bum, bum. And next, the Iron Man trilogy. One is the best. Now two, I know what you're going to say. Why do you have number two? It sucks. Iron Man 2 is definitely not perfect. It does have its problems, and it's definitely the weakest one of the trilogy. But it does have some good moments to it. And yes, to all you hardcore fans out there, you may not agree with me, but I like Iron Man 3. And it's I would say it's on my list of honorable mentions for 2013. And I think it was a much better, much better send-off for Iron Man. The first one, definitely one of my favorite superhero movies. You know, if it wasn't for this movie, Robert Downey Jr. would not be where he is right now. The guy I subscribe to, Sam's channel, he described this movie as the movie that nobody saw coming. Not even me. Next up is a classic, Jaws. One of Spielberg's best movies. And this is the one where most people feel that Spielberg came into his own as a director. But hearing that the shark wasn't working and Spielberg decided to not show the shark for a good part of the movie... That actually really was a smart idea because those things like the floating dock or the girl getting tossed around and dragged into the water or seeing things from the point of view of the shark under the water, seeing like the kids swimming around, it really added to it because, you know, a lot of horror movies these days, they show stuff right away and it gets to the point where you're just like, okay, this is getting stupid. I love that scene with Robert Shaw discussing the Indianapolis. Sharks got lifeless eyes with doll's eyes. Oh, and you hear that terrible high pitch screaming. I'll never put on a life jacket again, Chief. Jumanji. Yeah, okay, I mean, it's, you know, it was trying to make a lot of profits off the game and everything, but it, this movie's a lot of fun, actually. Robin Williams is really good. Kirsten Dunst is in here, long before she was known as Mary Jane in Spider-Man. Directed by Joe Johnson, who later directed Captain America. It's a lot of fun. Next we have the Jurassic Park Ultimate Trilogy. Now, I know what you're going to say, why do you have the third one? I do like the third one, it's definitely not that great, but I usually watch it as part of like a background music whenever I am doing something else. The first one is a classic, and I actually like the second one. I mean, it's definitely not as good as the first one, but I think it has a lot of strong points to it, and a lot of people were like, well the city section in the end kind of ruined it for me, and I can understand that, but that didn't really bother me too much. But but yeah, I like the second one. The first one, come on, it's a classic. Again, one of Spielberg's best. Not not much else I can say. Yeah, yeah, you can laugh at me. You can laugh at me. Night and day. I didn't mind this one, okay? Tom Cruise, Cameron Diaz. What else do you want? The Matrix. Whoa. <laughs> I actually watched this recently when I was... I downloaded it onto my iTunes and I watched it for the first time. This movie is actually really impressive. I mean, the I mean the special effects are just holy crap. I mean that scene where he's dodging the bullets and everything, the camera spinning around. I, I actually my jaw just dropped. Just went, what? And the, and there was a lot of films after this that really tried to replicate the creation, the like the world, like the world that the Matrix set up. That's gonna happen. But you know what? This movie is actually really impressive and really. One of the most original sci-fi films I've ever seen. Next we have Men in Black 1 and 3. Never 
am I going to own Men in Black 2? Men in Black 1 is the best one. Men in Black 3, this was actually quite a surprise. I mean, it's definitely not as good as the, the first one, but it's not that far off. I mean, if you don't like it, fine, but I like Men in Black. The Josh Brolin. I, mean, I actually thought I was watching a young Tommy Lee Jones, and, and that ending and the twist and everything, I'm about to spoil something, with Agent J's dad, that just that just came out of nowhere. Much better send off for Men in Black 3, and I don't want a fourth one. I don't want a fourth one. Leave these two as, leave the Men in Black franchise alone. Next up, Oz, the Great and Powerful. Now, I saw this movie on Family Day, the day before I graduated from basic training, and you know what? I actually liked this movie. I thought it was pretty good. Directed by Sam Raimi of the Spider-Man trilogy and the Evil Dead films, James Franco is so much fun. Rachel Weisz is very good. Michelle Williams is just great in, in her role. Mila Kunis... Uh, she was okay. Half the time I thought she was okay, and the other time I just went, oh god. Sam Raimi and his whoever the writer was were able to inject quite a bit of heart in this movie, and the movie could have been a little bit shorter. I mean, the pacing was a little bit long, but this is actually really good. I, I thought so, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. When most people consider Quentin Tarantino's best film, Pulp Fiction. Like I said before, I've never seen Pulp Fiction. I know you're gonna, I know a lot of you are gonna want to kill me, but don't worry, I will watch this, okay? Another group that I'm about to bunch into one, The Rolling Stones. Crossfire Hurricane documentary, ladies and gentlemen, The Rolling Stones, and Some Girls Live in Texas in 78. Anyone who knows me, I am a huge Rolling Stones fan. I've loved The Rolling Stones for a long time. They are my all-time favorite band, or musicians, whatever. This is a great documentary. This was released for the 50th anniversary of The Stones, like for how long they've been around. Ladies and gentlemen, this was released originally in 1974 for their 1972 North American tour. And I actually had the privilege of seeing this in theaters about three years ago. It was like a one-night only release thing. But it was actually quite a lot of fun seeing this. In the I actually forgot that I was in the theater. I thought like I was actually at that concert. That's how great it is. Not much else you could say, but this is a lot of fun also. Rolling Stones, as Sam Cutler said. The greatest rock and roll band in the world, the Rolling Stones! The Sandlot. Love The Sandlot. This is a childhood classic for me. Saving Private Ryan. In my opinion, Spielberg's best film. And really, really a hard movie to watch. Because there was a lot of times where I actually was turning away that I couldn't look. Tom Hanks, every time I watch him die in this movie, he's like, earn this. Oh, God. I'm probably the best war movie that's ever been made. And you know what? I might actually do a review for this next year because in case you don't know the opening scene where they land on the beach that's the invasion of normandy of june 6th of 44 next year it's going to be 70 years 70 years since then i might actually review this for the anniversary so great movie great movie next sherlock holmes and sherlock holmes a game of shadows robert downey jr as sherlock holmes and jude law as watson how could you not love those two i like the second one more myself but the first one's still good mark strong is the villain he, he, he was okay, but Moriarty, played by Jared Harris, better villain, Silver Linings Playbook. This movie really surprised me. This is the one movie where I saw Bradley Cooper and I just went, wow. Man, she... sorry, I apologize, can't help it. This is like the first movie that I saw Robert De Niro in in a long time where it was actually good. The best that he that he has been in a long time, and I really hope he does go back to making good movies again. I actually felt like I was watching real people. Next up, we have Spider-Man 1 and 2. Now, I, I do like 3. It's not a bad movie, but I don't like it enough to own it. As for Amazing Spider-Man, I, I didn't really care for it too much. I mean, I did like it the first time I saw it, but it's, it's not really great. But these two, in my opinion, now mind you, the best incarnation of Spider-Man we've had, aside from the comics, and Tobey Maguire. I mean, why does everybody hate him? I love him as Spider-Man. I mean, yeah, the whole emo Peter thing, yeah, that, that was stupid, but that's not his fault. People scoff at this movie now, but say what you want. This is one of the best superhero movies that's ever been made, and in my opinion, still the best Spider-Man movie that we've had. If it wasn't for these two movies, we wouldn't have had superhero movies the way we have them today. Childhood favorites of mine, I really hold these close to my heart. Not too many people like them anymore, but I love them. Another that I'm going to bunch into one, Star Trek. Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan. This is the only original Star Trek film that I've seen. And you know what? I actually liked it. I mean, I had never seen a Star Trek film before 2009. But I actually like this one. This is very good. Star Trek 2009. In my opinion, Abrams' best film that he's ever done. 
As for Into Darkness, people still like it, but they don't like it as much as the last one. And I agree, it's not as good as the last one, but this is still a great movie. Benedict Cumberbatch as Khan? Wow. I mean, look, I love Ricardo Montalban as Khan. He's great as Khan. But for some reason, Benedict Cumberbatch comes to my mind. So, I mean, yeah, you can shoot me for that. But, <laughs> you know, I cannot wait to see what Abrams brings to Star Wars. I really can't. Super 8, another J.J. Abrams film, and also produced by Steven Spielberg. This was a lot of fun and a great tribute and homage to Spielberg's classics like E.T. and Close Encounters. But this, to me, was like a mix of The Sandlot and E.T. thrown together. Some people were actually split over the ending. I thought it was an actually nice ending. I mean, it kept it simple. Next, we have Taken. I am not owning Taken 2. Ever. Ever. If I find out that some of you do own Taken 2, I will find you. And I will kill you. Liam Neeson as an action star? I would not want to cross him. Definitely would not want to cross him. Next, Terminator 1 and 2. Love these two movies. And I, I do like the third one. I don't own it yet. I mean, I know not too many people like the third one. I didn't mind it, personally. The fourth one is, yeah, it's not that great. I, I get it. It's not great. I mean, Christian Bale was fine as John Connor. But the main thing that bothered me was, Mar was uh, Sam Worthington. I just didn't really like his character. One is a classic 80s movie. Number two got even better, and in my opinion, James Cameron's best movie. Love Terminator 2. Hasta la vista, baby. <sighs> Next we have... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and laugh at me. I own Titanic. Yeah, I know. I know, you're gonna laugh at me. But I love Titanic. And, you know, this, it's considered great by a lot of people. And this is the movie where I actually pretend that I don't like It's like, oh, that's such a chick flick. I don't like Titanic. But in private, I actually find myself loving it. I mean, the romance is pretty cliche. But it's probably one of the few Hollywood romances that I can actually give a pass to. Because Leonardo DiCaprio's character and Kate Winslet's character, Jack and Rose, they're both likable people. They want a better life. The last half of the movie where the ship is sinking, just pure gold. I mean, James Cameron did such a good job with this. There are people who consider this to be good, but this is probably my biggest guilty pleasure. I mean, I know, but I love Titanic. The Lindas want you to open the door. <laughs> the Town. In my opinion, Ben Affleck's best film that he's ever directed. Love The Town. And Jeremy Renner as the hothead. Just love that. I kill. Next, we have a good action film, which I actually personally enjoyed. Unstoppable. Denzel Washington and Chris Pine. And Chris Pine plays the same character. He plays Captain Kirk and everything, which I get, you know, he's kind of stuck there, but I enjoy Unstoppable quite a bit. We're almost done here. I'm going to get to We Bought a Zoo. I remember seeing the trailers for this and it didn't really impress me that much, but watching this movie, it's really good. And Matt Damon, once again, he proves that he's one of the best actors we have. Scarlett Johansson surprised me and Thomas Hayden Church. Stop before zebras get involved. This is a really heartfelt movie and with a really nice message. If you just have 20 seconds of courage, it'll pay off in the end. I love this. And last, but certainly not least, X-Men 1. Now, I don't have X-Men 2 yet, because I haven't seen X-Men 2 yet. And with the Days of Future Past coming out, I decided to watch the X-Men movie. So I watched this for the first time, and I liked it. I thought it was very good. It's not, I don't think it's a masterpiece or anything. And, I mean, it certainly played a part in relaunching the superhero genre, but Spider-Man 1 and 2 is the one that really skyrocketed it. But this one is definitely a good movie. Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. What a badass. Ian McKellen as Magneto, also good. And Brian Singer, he did a really good job here. So yeah, overall, I like this one. I like X-Men 1, and I cannot wait to watch the second one. Okay, those are all the Blu-rays I have. Thank you so much for watching. Comment below, tell me what you thought of this video, and stay tuned for my review of Thor in anticipation for Thor The Dark World. <laughs>